Okay, a very good week for Bulls as uh, Jerome Powell effectively declared open season on Bears and Jackson a hold with a very ebullient, uh, almost joyous and arguably victorious tone that he struck, making jokes, cracking two jokes, laughing to himself, and basically saying, I told you so on the transitory thing. The ship took longer than maybe some expected to come into harbor, but he believes it has settled in and those risks behind us now does effectively, I think, put in a pretty decent Fed put for now. Basically, as long as the economy doesn't worsen quickly, Mr. Powell looks ready to pull the lever. That means if we get weak data points, that's not good, of course. You don't want that. But it looks like 50 could still very much be in play. The expectation coming into today that I had was that he was not going to go that extreme and basically tell us that he's ready to make big moves. I think the tone there, and maybe he doesn't explicitly say it, but have you ever seen Jerome Powell with that type of behavior and uh, optimism? It's reassuring to see, and so I think the green light is in good place for stocks because at this point, you really have to get a major deterioration economically to feel that that Fed put that he's going to have is not going to help offset economic weakness. But here, there still is a major challenge within the market, which I think could lead to still occasional spikes in volatility around data, which is that you have a market geared towards early cycle with the Russell leading, the high beta rally, companies that depend on the economy, the cyclical nature. What we got today, which was basically what we got in July, lie that rotation trade the key thing today is that tech was taking part in it too that's really important we didn't have a zero sum rotation today like we did in july so that's really good for the market obviously you have to have nvidia hold up next week but as long as it does then barring some major acceleration in unemployment upwards we should be in pretty good shape for a little bit Again, the catch, though, is that the market's trading like early cycle behavior or at least like a mid-cycle refresh when the actual underlying unemployment data triggering the SOM rule, the uninversion of the yield curve almost, those are very late cycle things. That means there's going to be tension here. That means that while stocks should be able to continue to grind or at least should have downside limited, that if there are disappointing data prints, then things could move very quickly. I kind of think actually what we got basically around the yen and the August sell-off is probably somewhat of a blueprint to use. If we're going to have volatile events, it seems like they're going to be flashes in the pan of fear that perhaps Powell is going to uh, have to act to save the economy. The reflation stuff, probably not an issue again until at least post-election or next year. Even if PCE comes in warm next week, at this point, it's going to take a lot after the tone we heard from Powell to convince the market that reflation's an issue. So that puts the economy as the only threat. So as long as things don't get terrible, then we should be all right. S&P technically looks pretty good. I mean, bears are looking for what, like a double top? Like, Good luck with that. I mean, it's possible, but still, good luck. The bigger question is going to be if tech is going to come back with the same force. That's really what you want to get next week. You don't want to get the zero-sum rotation trade. When the Russell's out front on its own, that's when the risks open up. That's what we got in July that then created that opening for the market to fail its rotation and then get slammed. So watch for uh, the tech trade to come back next week. On the year, basically, it's been the Magnificent Seven has been the way to go. Quality has been the way to go. High beta stuff has not been. That's what's important here to keep in mind. If you're betting on the value, if you're betting on the high beta stuff that moved today, that moves on the notion of lower rates, that trades like early cycle, that's going to be riskier stuff. And it hasn't so far panned out. So as long as NVIDIA doesn't give us a big disappointment, it seems like your playbook is basically stay up in the quality, have faith in the MAG7, and if you are worried about those spikes in vol, the BTAL or a low vol type of anti-beta fund is a good complement into the overall exposure to equities as well. So that's pretty much what I got to offer. Green light on stocks. I put the yellow on the dollar. Maybe that was wrong yesterday. If it cuts to one year low, then I'll put the dollar back red because I didn't think Powell was going to be that celebratory and that confident and really leave the door open to 50 basis points, which I think he did. Market's got a 30 percent chance of it in September. That seems somewhat reasonable. Have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in for a big week. I'm Oliver Rennick. Appreciate you watching the Schwab Network.